Um, all right, so let me, let me go through a couple slides here and I'll, I'll buzz through some of these and spend a little more time on, on others. Part of this is also to just give you some insight also uh, into the manufacturer going forward program and how these cars developed. Uh, you'll recognize some of them. All right, so again, like I said, back in the late 90s, I was in the air-cooled cars. This is a normally aspirated 993. Um, uh, I also spent time in the, in the turbo cars. These were really interesting, really neat, fun to drive, um, and eventually got a chance to move up into, this was really one of the very first water-cooled uh, 996 cars when they came out for GT Racing. Uh, this team, I, I won with them a championship with this car, but uh, for those, again, I don't know how much people follow of the details of these cars, but they were atrocious to drive. They were based on streetcar suspension. The car handled horrible. We had to run it very stiff in its spring rate so it wouldn't move. It was a nightmare, but again, the manufacturers evolved and changed and adjusted these cars. So 2004, this was really the first year that Flying Lizard started with the uh, GT3 RSR, um, and it was a big step up from what you saw as that 996 water-cooled car. Um, this year, our first season, we competed against, again, if you follow it, Alex Job, who was the factory GT Porsche team back then. Uh, and in our very first season, we, we got on the podium. We won at Mid-Ohio. We were on at Sonoma. Finished second in the championship. So it was a huge accomplishment for us and a big splash as far as the racing community goes. Um, oh, there's me spraying champagne. I had to throw that in there. <laughs> uh, one of my co-drivers back in, in that time, I don't know if I can. Uh, was Johannes Van Overbeck. He spent uh, many years ra racing for ESM in the Patron prototypes. Uh, we won a lot of races together. This thing, there we go. Um, so one of the things to take a look at here, uh, as the years progressed through the RSR, uh, they would, Porsche would stick with a very similar car for a year or two and then up, add updates and changes. Uh, this is more kind of car techie talk, so I don't know how many people follow all this stuff, but, but they really didn't change much over the first couple years. If you look back then, they had uh, uh, radiators in the front, uh, in the bumper, the oil coolers were up front. Uh, it, was, it was not great, especially when you're running into other people and hitting cars. I mean, stuff would break and it'd end your race. Uh, as they moved up, this is the next year. You can see this is a huge evolution from this car to this car already over one season. So uh, the radiator is still in front with this car. The uh, radiator exhaust point is slightly behind the bumper. So you can see some minimal changes. I thought this was just kind of cool to see some of the evolution of these cars. Uh, they have different aerodynamic features. One thing that happens, or, or that is on most cars, most race cars these days, they call it a front splitter. So it's uh, an under tray in the front end and it sticks out and it creates a lot of aerodynamic downforce on the front of the car. It's amazing to me. You'll see how long it takes to actually get one of these on the race cars, but this just has a piece, to, uh, piece of plastic uh, right under the front bumper there as an aerodynamic device. Um, it's, it, it's also crazy to me. These things are hundreds of thousands of dollars, and they have a $2 piece of plastic hanging off the front of it. Really? You know? <laughs> um, so 06 and 07, or 06, uh, the cars stay pretty much the same. Uh, in 2007, they were very much the same. Uh, if you look on the front end, I don't know if this, this laser pointer, if you can see that, we've got a lot of uh, extra little winglets, dive planes up front. These add a lot of downforce to the cars and they started to advance. Uh, you'll see like here on the front fenders how it really sticks out and it was a very harsh angle. Um, Porsche got wise and again, looking forward, going forward. If I can get this to work, whoops. Oh, I don't know what happened. Well, anyway, very, very similar. We, uh, Flying Lizard, tried a three-car team. Uh, for me as a driver, that was really cool. As a team, let me tell you, it's a nightmare having that many cars and trying to run that program like that. Um, there we go. So 2010 was a big change. Um, uh, as far as the big thing here was the radiator. Uh, you'll notice up here there's a bunch of louvers on the hood. So Porsche started to get smart. They moved the radiators back behind the bumpers. They changed the air inlet. They, they adjusted how the thing would handle um, through different airflow and things like that. The wing in the back uh, prior to this back here had a big step up. They moved up to uh, flat wings, which was a different aerodynamic device. 
Uh, and I, I put some other pictures in here, just some cool shots of the car. In the back, they, they play with a lot of aerodynamics. And, and anyway, so my point here is these cars and the manufacturers looking forward, going forward, evolve and change. And it, it was really neat for me to be behind the scenes with the factory because most of the customer cars for people that race Porsche in professional racing, GT racing, they will get these cars eventually. But we were, because we were support, supported by the factory, we had all these cool parts and different things and different differentials and engine parts and, and aerodynamics. So I got to see all this stuff prior to customers getting it, which was a big advantage on the racetrack, which also helped us to win many championships. Um, you'll notice in 2011, this was a big evolution for the RSR. Uh, the front end is uh, similar, but they've changed how the fenders, if you can see this, how the fenders change. They don't have that big, have that big sharp piece sticking out. So they became more aerodynamic. Uh, they have an inlet. They had an inlet on the side, which if you're following, if you watch Daytona this year, the inlet for the, uh, for the uh, engine is on the side as well again. So there's, again, it's just, for me, this is neat stuff, how it evolves and changes. Uh, these are the cars as they come, when they come from the factory, obviously not painted. Uh, and you'll notice up here, uh, what I was talking about, this splitter, it's no longer a little piece of plastic hanging off the front bumper. It's this big, long splitter that sticks out that provides a lot of downforce and a lot of speed. These things are phenomenal. Uh, they were on, we were always on Michelin tires, the speeds that you can carry through corners. The top, this top speed of this car was 190 mile an hour. It's just, it's pretty amazing. And then you'll see there's some really kind of crazy stuff they were playing with in the back. They would change. Uh, how they cut out the fenders and, and diffusers and how the air flows underneath the car. This is what makes the car handle and grip. Um, again, cool experience to be able to drive. I thought I'd throw some of this in because I mentioned Lamar earlier. Uh, I just want to bring up Lamar because it's so cool. We did a year, uh, Flying Lizard did a couple years when we went to Lamar and we did a, uh, we call it an art car. And many of the manufacturers do an art car. Uh, when we did this, what was really interesting about our program, Porsche being the factory supported program basically supplied a car, supplied the drivers, supplied the engineering. Then the second car was actually owned um, by the team. So we always had a factory owned car and a team car. What was interesting about this is this is 2011. Uh, the orange car, and I, I don't know if anybody, did anybody go to Rensport? You guys, anybody out at that? I mean, very neat event. They do it every few years. So the orange car, it was at, at uh, Laguna Seca this year. The orange car was actually at Rensport. Uh, and this was, the, um, this was actually the team car. And the guys that drove it this season or this race were um, Patrick Long, Lucas Lure, and Jurg Bergmeister. This car finished fifth, I think, that year at Le Mans. Uh, the blue car was actually the factory-owned car. This is the one I drove with a guy named Spencer Pompelli and the owner, Seth Nyman. Um, and for me, this was, this was a, a special car. It's a super cool paint job. Troy Lee went through this. He's a famous painter and, and did this very special design for us. But when that race ended that year, we we're actually leading and uh, had engine problems. But when this race ended, that car disappeared. I never saw it again. I don't know where it went. No one knew. Porsche took it back. And uh, crazy enough, uh, maybe a week ago, uh, on Twitter, a picture was posted of the blue car in Zuffenhausen at the museum on display. So. It was, it was just cool to see, you know, that this car was gone and Porsche took it and now it's on, it's, it's on display right now in the museum. So very cool. But again, Le Mans is, for those who haven't been, uh, if you want to go see a sports car race, this is the race to go see, if you can get over to France, obviously. Um, so it, it's just an amazing spectacle. There, there's suites and there's people and... And there's me and York hanging out with the girls. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. There's lots of cool stuff going on at Lamar. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> Just saying. So, um, so at Lamar, and, and you guys have been, you've, you've probably seen this, they do, a, uh, they do a parade through the city. And this is a small little town, uh, not a lot of people, but it's just packed. I mean, you can see 15, 20 people deep, and it's a five-mile little five mile route, and you get in these old cars, and you tootle through the city, and you throw out brochures and things like that. Uh, it's, it's just unreal, and you literally feel like a rock star. I mean, I go to, I don't know how many races in the U.S., and I'm like, hey, buddy, there are a few people here and there and recognize you, but they will swamp you as you get out of your van. They're taking pictures. They're wanting autographs. It's 
it's just, there, there's, there's no experience. I, there's nothing in the US like this, so. Uh, but it's really cool, you travel through the city, uh, you get to throw out, uh, like I said, cards and talk to people and uh, the only thing I really hated about this part of it was that you're in these old cars that are smoking and have a lot of fumes and everyone was sick the next day before the race. So it's, I don't know if it's a smart thing, but it was, it was very cool. Um, so anyway, I, I threw a couple more pictures in uh, from that year at Le Mans. Uh, and, and again, this was a really cool design done by Troy Lee and we actually had the names of every Porsche driver that won a championship on each of the cars and their flag, and that's why you see some of the flags, uh, was painted on the car, and each driver that we found that was still alive uh, signed the car. So very, very cool thing to do as a team. Uh, and I, again, I threw in a couple pictures. It was uh, a great experience, and, and it was interesting um, looking at these things, and, and the American Le Mans series, which is now IMSA, was, was huge back in the day. Uh, we obviously, as a driver, you have to deal with a lot of different conditions and a lot of rain. If you guys watched Daytona this year, they literally shut the race down because of the rain. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, that's a, a scary situation. Everyone likes to talk, you know, have bravado that, yeah, I'm a great rain driver, I can handle it, but when it gets this bad, it's just, it's impossible. You're just hanging on for dear life. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's just amazing. I got to get in this half million dollar race car and just drive the heck out of it, drop it off at the end of the day and go back to my hotel every night. <laughs> I mean, who else gets to do that? It was, it was very cool, very cool. Um, all right, so moving forward. So I mentioned I also drove for Brumos. So Brumos, uh, again, you'll see some evolution here with the cars. Brumos um, has a lot of history in racing, but uh, did a several years of prototype racing. So myself and David Donahue actually uh, drove together as teammates. And for those that know who David Donahue is, this is Mark Donahue's son, the famous driver from the 60s. What's crazy is I met David um, in the 90s and, and I mentioned to him when we first met, he didn't know who I was, uh, that, that my father worked for your father. His father was killed in a, in a testing accident back in the, in the early 70s. Anyway, I told him that my father worked for your father and he wrote me off as a total nutcase because he hears this stuff all the time. But uh, it's just kind of ironic that all of a sudden, 30 years later, he and I are racing together as teammates and we spent probably eight years as teammates driving for Brumos. Uh, these cars were not the best looking cars for those that followed the Grand Am era uh, in the 2000s, but uh, they were a lot of fun to drive. Uh, again, some of the really cool things that I, I got to do, and again, this is, I'm a gearhead, so I love this kind of stuff, but. Uh, we spent a lot of time doing a lot of development work, got to go to the wind tunnel. This is actually the fab car, um, Brumos car, in a, a scaled down version, all carbon fiber, in a wind tunnel. I got to watch how the, the air flows over the car and through the ducting and, and, how, and we move pieces around. You can see there's a lot of tape on stuff, so you would move bits and pieces around and see what gave more downforce or less downforce or more drag or less drag. So it's just, it was really neat stuff to watch uh, and see how it's done. Uh, the, the fab car, this is the fab car, evolved and, and grew into a different program, uh, moved into a different model. This is a, a Riley, uh, which was a very nice car to drive. Uh, eventually, Dave and I took on the Brumos colors for the last couple years that we ran this car um, and, and had some success, had a great time. Again, I got to throw another podium picture in just because. <laughs> um, but as, as we raced, this program with Brumos went through about 2010. Uh, and again, you know, my final, my final big achievement here with this group with Brumos and Porsche was winning Daytona, which is just, um, you know, out of, out of control. It's, it's something every driver dreams of and tries to get to. So uh, really, really neat experience. Uh, 